Welcome to this DVI CADcast What's New series. Today we're covering what's new in SOLIDWORKS Composer 2015. Let's go ahead and take a look. Alright, so here's the uh, quick rundown of the, the new items for 2015 Composer. Uh, it's a pretty short list, but uh, there's some, some good stuff in here. Uh, I also wanted to bring up the, uh, the changes as far as the uh, system requirements. Uh, You'll be able to open 2014 com SOLIDWORKS files still, uh, along with Creo and, and ASUS. Uh, there is only a 64-bit of the SOLIDWORKS Composer and the SOLIDWORKS Composer Player for this release. Uh, so this is uh, falling in line with the rest of SOLIDWORKS. Uh, they're actually uh, obsoleting the 20 or the 32-bit version for the 2015 release. Uh, all right, so let's go and get something open here. Uh, Interface-wise, you'll see it's pretty straightforward. It's the same standard interface. Um, file menus, nothing really changed there. Uh, the ribbon tabs, still the same. Uh, let's go and look at uh, the help and about. Uh, if you're used to 3D via Composer, um, this has changed a little bit. You've got the version number and your service pack along with your SOLIDWORKS serial number in that window. All right, so let's go and take a look at the, the first item. It's the uh, Composer browser-based user assistance portal. And what it really comes down to is that they've, uh, they've actually made, uh, moved the help menu over to your web browser. Uh, there is an issue right now um, at the time of this release that it doesn't work in Chrome. So if that's your default HTML viewer, uh, then it may give you problems. Internet Explorer, as long as you allow block content, uh, it'll work there. I've also tested it in Firefox as well. So you might need to change what your default uh, HTML is. Um, and as far as what it is, it's basically just a, a new look to the help menu. Um, I think it's a little bit easier to, to navigate. Uh, you've got uh, the contents on the left there. Uh, all the other stuff is actually still there. Uh, so for example, if you're going through the uh, working with a ribbon, it still breaks it down individually by each tab there. So just a, a new look, new interface, uh, something different. Uh, and I think they'll probably down the road be able to, to push updates and stuff uh, through that same interface as well, similar to what SOLIDWORKS does. All right, so the next item is the uh, View Portal Zoom Factor Property. And what this is is if I um, uh, select on just the background so nothing's previewed, uh, over here on the right I have the camera height uh, and I can actually set that at a specific distance uh, so that it basically would allow me to, to get every view set specifically at the same same view setting. Uh, I did notice one other thing with it though is uh, if you jump into your styles workshop and default style you can actually turn that setting on. Uh, go ahead and type in a value so maybe like uh, 350 here for mine. Hit enter and it stores that with that default style. I'll close that out and now if I go to a different view, and I won't save that one, uh, so this different view is at uh, 340.524 there, but now if I go styles, single click on my default style, you'll see that now that view is at that particular view setting. So it's kind of a great way to get all your views at the same depth there. So I might jump over to another one here, do a single click on my style. Once again, I've got it at the same depth. So kind of a, a great item. Uh, if you switch on the perspective mode, uh, it actually changes to a camera FOV. And I had to look up FOV because I forgot, but it's a, uh, um, a field of view. So it's basically because we're at uh, on a perspective view, uh, we're seeing that. And specifies the angular extension of the view. You'll see that in the help menu. Um, but same basic idea uh, that I can actually change uh, where I'm looking at. Uh, and let's check that one real quick. So styles, um, looks like I can store that as well as a default setting too. Again, with perspective uh, turned on, with perspective turned off, uh, lower right hand corner there. So camera height versus uh, FOV. All right, so this next one is uh, specifically for polylines. It's called uh, black or back border property for polylines. Uh, and so this only applies to uh, the regular polylines, uh, author tab, polylines, uh, not the uh, associative path from neutral, so just polylines. Uh, so with the polyline selected, 
Uh, over here in the properties I have border. I'm going to go and say show. Uh, and this allows me actually to pick out a color. Uh, so I'll go with maybe a black or something to start with. Uh, might change it to, to uh, maybe a green or something. And this is independent of the color. So I can actually make the, the line a little bit thicker. Uh, and I can make the width of this uh, backer here a little bit bigger. And I guess the idea would be just to kind of create the, or bring the emphasis uh, to the particular line. So when I go and click off of them, uh, it does still respect the, the fact that it does go behind the object as well. So just a new item for the polylines there. Alright, so this next one, I, I do want to kind of start out by showing you where I'm getting uh, all the what's new. Uh, actually, if you go up to the help menu and come down to release notes, uh, that'll actually open up the uh, PDF of the what's new there. Uh, so we're on to item number four here. Uh, so this is a change in behavior for some of the properties. Uh, multiple selection of actors. Um, it's one of those things that I probably didn't realize that you couldn't do, but might be a big help. Um, one example that I've set up here is like the uh, ability of uh, changing color with multiple uh, assemblies selected. Um, the other ones I'm not going to uh, take the time to show, but it is just a, a quick idea of some of the, the items that they've changed uh, to allow multiple selections. So I'm over on the assembly tab, select both of my two sub-assemblies I just created in the, uh, the composer file here, uh, and just the ability of changing uh, both of those sub-assemblies uh, to one uh, single color there. So it's kind of nice, great way to, to change those, maybe for emphasis or something to that effect. Whereas before, I think we had to go one by one there to, to get those uh, selected. All right, so this next one is the uh, the render mode as a uh, default document properties. Again, remember, SolidWorks Composer doesn't have templates per se. Uh, they only have the uh, default document properties. And what it is is if we go File Preferences, go down to Viewport, uh, there's this option for render mode. Uh, and what it is is if I created a new Composer document, whether it be in Composer or in SolidWorks doing the file Save As, um, I could have it always default to like silhouette or one of these other render style modes. I do want to point out that it's not on by default. Uh, we do need to create an environment variable. Uh, and then I'm going to go and copy this just so we can uh, create that. So create a environment render uh, variable, name that, uh, and set its value to 1. And uh, we'll go and go through that procedure just so you can see it here. All right, so I'm going to switch back to uh, SolidWorks Composer and just kind of show that it's not there. So properties, uh, default document properties, down to viewport, and it should be just below this ghost opacity, so it's not there by default. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out of Composer, uh, and then uh, I'm going to jump into the Windows Control Panel, uh, and I'll go and go System and Security. Uh, and then I'll go System again. Uh, and then over on the left there, we'll go and go Advanced System Settings. Okay. And that opens up this little window. So within this little window, I'll go uh, Environment Variables. Uh, and it's down here below that we want to create that, that, that environment variable. So I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to hit New. I'm going to paste in what I copied out of the uh, uh, the release notes of the, the What's New guide there, and I'll go and set that to value of 1, go and hit OK, uh, and now we actually have that value in the uh, uh, environment variables for Windows. So I'll go and hit OK, OK again, I can close out of this window, and then I'm going to relaunch Composer here. So I'm going to fire it back up, and I'm going to uh, go back into File, Properties, Default Document Properties, uh, and you'll see now we have that render mode. So I'll go and change that to uh, to silhouette and apply that. And I might also make a couple other changes. Maybe I, I don't want a gradient. Maybe I just want a solid color there. Apply that also. Uh, so now when I go and go file and open, and I'm going to grab a SolidWorks assembly, let it open that, and it's going to go through and do the, uh, the converting uh, of the document. And again, I could go file and uh, save as within SOLIDWORKS. So now I have a, a white background with a silhouette from the get-go. Uh, you can also create a uh, uh, 
uh, a registry key uh, if you're going to deploy this out to a bunch of users um, and uh, you want to have everybody's machine with that option it's going to be located in the Windows registry under uh, H key local machine system current control center control uh, and then go down to session manager uh, and then environment uh, and there's that registry key uh, so I could create it uh, and then do a um, export uh, and then strip off all the other variables that I don't want to change uh, and then only leave the uh, the one there for the uh, the DS uh, 3d VC override render mode and again value set to one there uh, so you could create a registry key if you wanted to, to do that uh, so a little bit more obscure but uh, definitely something that uh, if you're going to be doing that all the time might be worth uh, the time to, to turn it on all right so this next one is uh, the improved password management uh, that one shows up when you do a file save as and then uh, composer and we can go down to the uh, security here uh, when we decide to put a password in there uh, it actually gives us the confirmation box for the password so that way we don't accidentally type in the wrong password and uh, lock ourselves out uh, viewing it in the player mode I believe also if we go into uh, uh, save as package uh, which is the uh, self executable or the exe yeah, it looks like they've done the same thing as well type in the password and then confirm it that way you don't accidentally get the wrong password put in there alright so this next one actually is polylines and labels I'm just going to show the uh, the polyline part of it uh, but the uh, improvement of the extremity errors uh, arrows uh, so I'm going to actually go and grab a polyline come off to the side here and uh, come to the edge uh, where I want it to snap uh, stop my polyline uh, and then for my extremities over here on the properties on the left hand side um, I'll go and add an arrow uh, I'll go and make it a little bit smaller here um, biggest thing is that the uh, the arrow actually does start at the edge and then continue out uh, so it's less likely to actually pop into the wrong spot as far as the location goes so pretty simple but uh, definitely helps improve uh, conveyance of information there with your uh, polylines and also your labels as well. All right, so the uh, ninth one in the uh, the what's new uh, 2015 Composer uh, PDF here is uh, an update to Composer Sync. Um, Composer Sync's a, a separate license, so you do have to purchase it separately. Uh, it's designed to to automate some of the update processes and that type of stuff. Um, so one of the things that they did uh, this release. Uh, is uh, the ability of doing HTML and XML for the uh, the log file and I think that's mostly just so that uh, it can be automated and integrated into another system like an ERP or a um, um, logs saying whether it's successful or not successful that stuff can be read in real easily uh, so not going to apply to most of you there all right, so this final one is actually pertaining to the Composer Player. It's the permanent storage of the user customization. And uh, I believe this actually applies to a machine that has SolidWorks Composer loaded on it or just the Composer Player. Uh, so I'm going to go and save my Composer document, uh, jump over to the Composer Player shortcut here that I've got on my desktop. I'm going to open that up and I'll go and open up my file here. So I'll go and open up that one that I was working on. There's a couple of common items that uh, typically uh, were of an issue. One is the replay, uh, and then a lot of the times you don't want your markers showing up there at the bottom. Uh, the replay uh, comes real important, especially when we have a, uh, an animation uh, that's an interactive animation. Uh, so for example, I've got the, a play button here to go to the, the next marker here. Uh, so I'll go and click on that button. Uh, it'll go to the next marker but you'll see that it actually will replay just that one section between the two markers which isn't usually what we want uh, so I'm actually going to turn off the the replay section and then uh, it'll actually play normally in fact if I play this from beginning uh, you'll see that it'll actually work the, the way I intended to uh, so it was kind of cantankerous uh, for the end user to have to turn off that replay every single time see there it stopped and it, it waited for me to hit the button 
to continue on. So the other thing down here at the bottom is the fact that the uh, the markers are. So I'm going to right click and turn the markers off, uh, and I'm just going to close Composer. I don't need to do anything, uh, so I'm just going to go exit, uh, and then I'll go and open it back up here again. So this could be another day or another week or something, uh, different document, uh, and I'll go and go uh, open, grab my same document or different document. Uh, once again you'll see that uh, the replay is off uh, and then my markers for my animation aren't there as well. Uh, same functionality that we're always used to so we still get the, the ability of rotating and selecting parts and hiding those and that type of stuff so all that stuff's still available. Uh, it's just the permanent storage of the settings there. I'm going to jump into the registry here and show you the uh, where they're stored at as well just for your own uh, sake. Alright, so we're in the uh, registry here, so we're looking at uh, HKey current user. Uh, so this is whoever's logged in to the machine that's user specific. Software. Uh, Desalt. Uh, I think the uh, the What's New PDF actually says that this is uh, SolidWorks Composer, but they still haven't changed that just yet. Uh, down to players, uh, and then uh, GUI settings or GD GUI uh, settings there. Uh, and kind of the specific ones like the loop play, uh, that's one of them, uh, player visibility, uh, and then also uh, uh, player toolbar. So those, depending on which one we're looking at, uh, their state is actually stored in here. Um, I haven't tried this yet, but I, I would suspect that you could actually do a uh, uh, export and then import in. Uh, again, keep in mind that it's a user specific. Uh, so if you do s reset the entire user profile by renaming or deleting, uh, that would also have to be reset up again next time you launch Composer Player. But again, most of the time you don't need to get into the registry there, uh, but they are stored in the registry. Well, that's the end of this episode of our DDI CADcast What's New series uh, on Composer 2015. Definitely check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash ddicad.com and also our tech blog at ddicad.com forward slash tech center. Thanks and have a great afternoon.